Hello and welcome to round four of the Gran Turismo Tour and Car Championship. Today we have the reverse grid uh, from Suzuka's race and this is taking our uh, place at the village uh, in reverse. So um, starting, I finished fifth in the last race so I'm starting I believe eighth. Uh, so as I say reverse grid. In the stronger car though this time we're in the Audi TT. So we're taking the start here, revving and let go of the brake, a little bit of a bog down, turn off the traction control and then we're off into this race. So it's going to get quite congested up into this first corner, it is quite tight so I'm going to take it nice and easy. Quite a few more TTs in this race, it looks like a lot of people went for the TT in this race, uh, the stronger more standout car of the season. So out the first chicane, trying to get on the power as early as possible and getting alongside uh, Roy here in the Samsung TT gives us a bit of a nudge but we're still in there and then we're breaking and we're on the outside we've got to leave him space on the inside a little bump and a rub but that's nothing uh, too bad and uh, he holds on to the place then down into this corner here I break nice and early and then try and get on the power getting on the power a little bit too early and get a bit of grass and get a bit of a slide but the front wheel drive pulls us around and then unfortunately we bump into the Hooters car who then bumps into Gold 45 in the Audi TT who would just avoid there um, no way to really avoid any issues there we're just powering out the corner so um, up to fifth so good start um, but the front guys have started to spread out a little bit so uh, I don't want to let them get away I want to keep the guys who are behind me behind me and I want to catch up to the guys ahead so around that quick right hand corner I do like that corner it definitely rewards you for getting in there early so then on that off camber uh, left hand corner there there if you it too much you definitely lose a little bit of time there but gained a lot of time on Roy through that left hander there uh, that's quite a nice corner with a positive camber so we look to the outside he's going to hold us to the outside so we'll go on the cut back so break early and get the cut back done on Roy so uh, let's check a quick replay of that how that was done and I'll walk you through what was going through my mind so here we're giving him a couple of flashes, he's going to go to the inside line but he's going to be a lot tighter, he brakes later than us, so because we were on the brakes earlier we managed to complete, come, cut back and go underneath him and then we managed to uh, keep ahead of him and the brakes into this left hander uh, before going to, on, onto the back straight. So yeah we're up to, what's that, fourth now, so we've got um, I think it's Moly and uh, Jay in the Rizla TT just ahead and then Angus in the Hooters TT right at the front there trying to make good his escape. So looking at the uh, Mazda here, so we come out the final corner there, we can gain a lot of time on the brakes so then we're going to look towards the first corner but there's nothing happening so I'm going to get on the brakes early there and try and maximise the exit so there's just not enough space unless you're alongside something there. So try and get on the power as early as possible unfortunately I had to back out there which just meant we lost a little bit of time to the guys as we go up the hill so it's quite good to get a good exit there because it's all the way uphill looking to the inside now we managed to break a little bit early get our nose up in on the inside and complete the pass on the downward hill section uh, now I believe it's Jay and the Rizzle uh, TT just ahead so breaking very tight into there down to second and trying to get a good exit Jay's going Defensive. I'm going to try and take the route of least resistance, see if we can get any time there, not quite getting it. Look to the outside, nothing's shown there, Jay runs a little bit wide, we try and chop back down the inside but he cuts us off and holds us off uh, for a little bit longer. So he's going nice and tight here, so we try to cut back similar to what we did against Roy early, earlier, um, but unfortunately Jay manages to get a slightly better exit and we can't complete the pass here, we have to leave space on the inside for him there. And even though we are late on the brakes, he's just a little bit later and again we have to leave a bit of space for him. But now we're through that corner, we've got the inside line, got the better exit, we managed to complete the pass. Let's check it on the replay. So you can see here, we do the cutback. Uh, unfortunately, not quite enough speed to complete the move there. But it puts Jay in a compromised position through this corner here and then compromised into this corner here. He's on the tighter line and that just allows us to hold uh, more uh, momentum around the outside and complete the pass. So now we're up to second and we're going to just see if we can try and catch uh, Angus at this point. Uh, at this point it looks like he is doing some really good lap times so um, I'm going to fast forward it a little bit while we just try and get our head down and uh, try and close that gap a little bit towards him. So 
so over that time there you can see I was getting a little bit close to Angus and then I'd make a couple of mistakes and then lose out a bit of space. But now we're right on his tail and we can actually see Rusty is actually taking up third. So I really, at this point, I wanted to get this move done and dusted so um, Rusty didn't have a chance of catching up to us because we managed to get a three second gap here. So I didn't really want him to catch up here. So looking at Angus, he's holding us off there, but he does run a little bit deep and that allows us to catch up on the exit and he, a, his line was all the way up to the outside. So we break down the inside and it looks like we've almost got the move done, but uh, Angus managed to hold it out with more momentum around the outside line there. So this is what I mean, I was trying to get past Angus, but we just ended up holding ourselves up and we're losing time to Rusty who's just behind. So in the long bank corner here, holding a lower line, hoping to try and get myself into a better position, a bit like what we got against Jay in the Rizla TT. Looking to the inside, nothing going there, and Angus manages to hold on to the corner and hold good enough speed that he doesn't compromise himself too much on the exits here. So now looking to the left-hand corner, nothing's going to be doing here. Breaking zone just isn't long enough for a dive down there. And all this time now we've got... Um, Rusty are 2.2 seconds behind us, so he's caught us quite a lot, lot on this lap. So uh, this corner here, just dab the brakes. Uh, Angus gets on the grass a bit there, gets a bit squirrely, but just holds on to enough speed at the time there. And again, here I was close, but I, where I wanted to get on the power, uh, Angus's car was just in the way, so I couldn't get on the power where I wanted to. So at this point, now I need to really start thinking about setting him up for a, a move few corners away so coming down to the hairpin here we're going to look to the inside he breaks very well and we both go through but now I've got the position that I want I want to be on this side of the road for this next complex corners what we're going to do is force Angus to go really tight into this first corner here and then we can get the cut back on him not for this corner but the long corner up the hill where you need a good exit so we're there in third got better exit as we took the more open line through that corner and we managed to complete the pass. Let's check the replay on that one. So you can see it's all about setting it up from before. We're trying to hold him so he's going to be tight into the corner going up the hill. You can see how much wider he has to go there. So we've got the better line for the corner that's going to be all the way up the hill and that really benefits a good exit because you're going up a hill. And Angus there has a slot in just behind us. So now um, what I'm trying to do is focus on, I uh, need to try and open up a gap. I know Rusty has caught me and Angus while we were fighting there, but making mistakes like that where I'm running too wide into the, that hairpin is not helping. Um, what I also need to be careful of, of is uh, Angus is also in a TT, so it's going to have good straight line speed. And if he gets a slipstream, he will get a good nice toe to start catching us through here. So at this point, it's just about trying to get my head down focus on what's ahead rather than behind and uh, see if we can put a bit of time in, into uh, the gap between me and Angus. They're uh, a little bit slow on the entry there, you heard Angus's car squealing behind us so you're definitely getting closer and putting on the pressure. Coming into this corner, down two gears, turn it in, again we can hear Angus's car there, we clipped the apex a bit too much, we actually lost quite a lot of time there. You can see now Angus has got a slipstream all the way down here is he going to look at us into this right hand corner? Not quite, but we have to be careful of the left hand corner. We can hear his car coming up and we'll get down on the brakes and he just about gets his nose in there. Now unfortunately the braking stretch there wasn't long enough for him to really get alongside, but it did mean that he managed to put his nose ahead and put us off our line. So we tried to get a good exit down here and it looks like we've managed to hold him off down this long straight here, as late as possible on the brakes, all the way down to second gear. We managed to get to the apex, uh, Angus gives a, a little tap, we get on the grass, lose a little bit of control, but we have stayed ahead. All this time we're losing time to Rusty but behind. So now, at this point, Angus just coming up close, but we managed to, oh, he actually goes for the move on the left hand side there. Because he's backed out of it, he's going to lose a lot of time. Because, as I say, this is uphill. Any exit onto uphill stretch, you need to maximise that, those exits. So what we're going to do now, we're going to fast forward the action. Um, uh, next few laps, we just really need 
getting my head down, trying to open up the gap as much as possible, and even looking to uh, faster slap. Uh, so I like to try and see if I can get faster slap in the race if uh, the opportunities do arise. So uh, just trying to stretch out the gap up to seven, eight seconds between me and Angus. And Angus is staying ahead of uh, Rusty in the his TT as well. Uh, as well. In fact, it looks like uh, uh, Rusty's just got past and we've now got the gap open to what, 10 seconds. So I'm gonna walk you through my fast slap. So coming into the final corner, all the way down to second, nice and tight, get on the power, rev it out, all the way up to third, fourth, and then fifth. Right, so we're gonna be braking as we get to the curb on the left-hand side, but here we are, down to second. Use the gearbox, that slow car down, get it in, then get it turned, up to third, and then on the power as quick as possible. I don't hold second there, because I find it wastes um, a bit of power just revving it out so up to third early up over the hill and then as we see the shadow here we break down one gear and then meet the apex and on the uh, power nice and early don't use all the road because I think uh, you spend too much time going to the right when you need to go left down to second and then on the power as soon as we see the exit rev it all the way in, way out in second through third up to fourth and then on to fifth so we're up on our best time so far we're going to stay in the bottom half here, a dabber breaks down to second and then once the front end starts gripping on the power of full power. All the way up to fifth and then we're going to go all the way over to the left and we're going to break down two gears and then where I was braking just when the sign on the right hand side just went out of view uh, on the power. Now we're going to stay a little bit to the right here because there is that bump there and just throw the cars off and as soon as we see the kerb in, uh, break down two gears, meet the apex and then back on the power. Now this next corner can be quite tricky, uh, so we're going to go full power all the way up, I'll say as much to the left, turn it in, and then I'm going to do a dabber brake down one gear, and then use the LSD to start pulling us around this corner. Once we get back over to the kerb, down one more gear, and then meet the apex on the left hand side, use camber to help, and then back on the power, and as you can see we just nicely meet the edge of the track. Now down here you want to take the uh, root of least resistance, so putting in as little steering input as possible, trying not to scrub off speed. And then as soon as we see the kerb here and the car's alongside, down, all the way down to second, use gearbox again to slow it down. Could have been a little bit tighter, then back on the power and power out down across the start finish line. And that's a 159.1. As you can see, optimal, I could have had a 59, 58.9 in this race. So, um, a little bit more time left on the table, but it's a half de halfway decent time and I'm pretty happy with that at this point. We'll fast forward it all the way through to final lap. It's a 30 minute race, lap 15, missing the apex on the last corner there, but it doesn't really matter. And we're gonna come across and take my first win at season eight. So um, really happy with that. We've got uh, Rusty uh, second, Angus third, Rory, uh, fourth, uh, White Shark in fifth, uh, J sixth, Gold 45 seventh, Moly eighth, uh, Big Wall all the way down in ninth, uh, Rick in the um, TT tenth, and I believe eighth McLeod in eleventh. So that's a victory. If you enjoyed this, uh, we've got more racing coming up on the channel soon, and I'll see you then.